G'day all and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Wood. Uh, today we're going to do a beer injected uh, roast beef. It's going to be bloody awesome. Uh, today's cut is just literally uh, rump, so nothing over the top or overly expensive. So don't think you've got to go out and buy the best cut of meat. There's plenty of marbling in, in this particular piece of rump, so it's gonna make up a good roast beef. We're gonna cook this cook for about four to five hours, and then we're gonna rest it for an hour at the end of the cook uh, while we do our veg and gravy. So you're just gonna get an absolutely delicious, nice and tender piece of roast beef. So let's get cooking. Alrighty, so first thing we need to do is inject the beef with um, some pieces of garlic. So go ahead and pull the garlic down. Uh, basically, we just want the cloves themselves ready to throw into the meat, which I'll show you shortly. Alrighty, so we've got a handful of cloves of garlic there ready to go straight in. So all we need to do is grab a knife, carefully make an incision about two thirds of the way down into the into your piece of beef. And literally, just give that old garlic a good shove down into the piece of meat. Rinse and repeat. Until we've got all those cloves. Neatly into our piece of beef. Just give them a nice shove. Bit far. Let's not push that one right through to the bottom, eh? So remember, about two thirds of the way through. All right, so we've got a garlic tucked in there nicely. Next part of the process is gonna to be to use our meat injector and inject some beer into that. And then I'll show you how to make a rub. So back in a sec. Alrighty, so now we're going to inject our piece of beef with some beer. Um, so just crack a bottle open, grab your meat injector. Spence all the air out, and then we just literally draw in the beer. Literally see this piece of meat start puffing up as we go because we're filling it up with so much moisture in it in all the fibers there don't worry if you spill some back out it's okay just remember which piece of uh, uh, which bottle of beer you've been drawing from last thing you want to do is be sucking back some raw meat a lot of people will use a bowl or a cup pour the beer into it which I might have to do, to be honest. Oh no, I've got it. Let me go. Alright, so two injectors should do. Puff him up nice and full. So we've gone and injected a reasonable amount of beer into that. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna go one more. I reckon there's room for a bit more. We can't ever have too much beer, can we? Let's be honest. Just a little bit more on this side. All right. 
much. He's nice and full now. We're spurting around the outsides. So we'll put that one aside so I don't drink from it later. That can go in the sink. All right, so we'll slide this over to the side for a sec. And I want to show you guys how I make a really basic but absolutely delicious sweet rub for your beef roast. So here I have just some brown sugar, nothing fancy. Good dollop of the brown sugar there. And then the other complicated part of this, a good dose of salt. Now I've already got my Ozpig burning away nicely over here in the corner with the temperature sitting at about 150 degrees. Um, if you haven't already lit your smoker, don't stress, there's time in just a moment. Uh, we'll need to let this piece of meat, once we've rubbed it down to get the best result out of this rub, uh, you definitely need to let it sit for half an hour to an hour, just wrapped in cling wrap, and yeah, it'll it'll make all the difference. So we'll just mix that salt. So about two thirds uh, brown sugar and one third of salt. You can add more salt if you wish. Uh, I've got to be honest, Beef's best friend is salt, so put as much as you like on there. It's uh, it's certainly not going to make a bad roast if you have plenty of salt. Don't fear about drying the roast out using too much salt on the outside. To be entirely honest with you, uh, the process we're going to use to cook it, we'll have a steaming bowl in the smoker today, so the the salt won't dry out that meat too much uh, during the the cooking process so once you once you're done there literally just it's a bit more than a rub and just cake that on there let it soak into the beer give it a good lashing of it we're going to use all that flip him over to the other side just keep piling that on nice and thick if you get this rub right, it can actually really go to show when you get to the end of the cook uh, and you get this really nice looking piece of roast meat at the end of it, which being a sweeter rub, tastes great too. Just pile a bit on the edge there. Make sure we're gonna get all the fibers. Pile it in, pile it on. Beautiful. All right, so next bit of this process, you can see that's already starting to dissolve and leave like a caramelized um, layer on top of the, on, on the meat. And that's exactly the effect we're after, that nice caramelization before we even start to cook this piece of beef. So just make sure we use as much of that up as we can and we'll wrap him up and get him in the fridge. All right, folks, so we need to wrap this up in some cling to let it sit for a little while. So the longer you let it rest at this point, uh, the better you'll get the flavor of the beer, the garlic and the brown sugar and salt will really flavor up that piece of meat. So uh, I normally leave it for only about half an hour to 40 minutes. I find it's plenty enough because of the amount of moisture that we've got in there. Um, once we get it in the fridge, that's a good time for you guys to go and light your, your fire um, and get your smoker ready to go. So, all right. So I'll shrub that to the side. Out a piece of cling film. We'll just pick that up, lay it top down, get all the good stuff back off the tray. Smear that over the top again. Just wash my hands again. And 
then we can nice and tightly wrap our piece of meat. You're gonna need a couple of pieces generally to do this. So don't be shy on the old cling film, otherwise you make a mess in the fridge and the missus won't like it. Set that out of the way for a sec. Cling film number two. All right, that's ready to go in the fridge. So I'm gonna pop mine in the fridge now. You guys need to make sure that you get your smokers on. We wanna to get to about 150 degrees ready for this cook. Uh, if you get up around the 200, that's okay to start the cook, but the majority of the cook, we're gonna do it about 150. So see you back here soon. All right, folks, so half hour later, here we are back with the um, rested piece of meat ready to throw in the smoker. So I'll just grab a tray and we'll get that in. All right, here we go. Just throw that over a bowl so we don't drip everything everywhere. Give this lovely big piece of meat a quick unwrap. Now you're gonna find a lot of juices still resting around. Try not to lose those juices because we are gonna use them. So make sure you've got the top where you put the slits for your garlic face up so we don't lose all our moisture out of that. Straight on the grill. Smoker's already up to temp. Remember, we target temp for the, for the cooks about 150 degrees. And then in the middle of the smoker, slide that in about halfway. Alrighty. So, why do I want to keep these juices? We go over here, grab a nice little pan, which if you're lucky enough to own an Ozpig smoker, you know that that one comes with the smoker. And then, I want to get all this extra juice and brown sugar, salt mix, all the drippings of beer that have come out of the meat while it's in the fridge and drop it into that pan. Track that away, give your hands a quick wash. All right, so here's the next secret in keeping that cook nice and moist. So um, grab the rest of the beer that you just used for the injection process. Pour that in the tray. Beer number two. I'm gonna get this tray as full as we can. And what I'll actually do is pop it in the smoker before we go to beer number three so I can get it in without spilling it everywhere. So I'll slide that straight in on the bottom of the smoker there. Then we'll grab beer number three. And we're pretty close to full. Now keep one of those beer bottles handy because we are gonna use it through the cooking process. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit later just why we keep that. All right, folks, so just wanna show you quickly We'll pop this open. Um, as soon as we've popped that meat in and the water tray, the temperature drops very significantly on your smoker, especially if you're in a vertical assembly like this with the Ozpig. Don't panic, don't react, don't try and change the settings on your pig to get it to come up. We're going for a long cook, so it'll be okay. So when we open it up, you can see already the, the change in the color of the meat, it, it looks a lot darker and you can actually see the fibers starting to separate in the meat already. 
uh, and you'll notice just very casually you'll see drippings dropping into the tray down the bottom. So just check it every half hour or so from here and just make sure that that drippings tray doesn't run dry. Okay folks, so we're at the first 30 minutes of the cook and just want to check in on how we're going with firstly we want to make sure our drippings haven't run dry and we want to check on the meat to make sure we're you know not overdoing it or doing something wrong so here we are so the first 30 minutes that's what we're looking like inside so um you can see the the drippings tray in the bottom we're starting to drop down in liquid content so we'll need to top that up now as i said before you want to keep a, a bottle of beer handy, the reason being that empty beer bottle saves you having a dirty and make more washing up for the missus. So I'll top that one back up. Meat's coming along just nicely, so we're all good there. So we'll close that up. I was just a little under 150 when I cracked that open. And so we'll probably just need to check on the timber side of things there and make sure we've got plenty in there to keep it burning. Alrighty, so we'll just grab that tool and flick her open. Yeah, it's burning quite nicely in there. We'll chuck a fresh bit of timber in. Here we go, we'll just close that back over most of the way. So there's a sweet spot when you're shutting the door that you need to pay attention for. So quite often these doors will close over more than what you actually want to for the airflow and you restrict too much airflow coming into your fireplace. <clears throat> As you open it up, you'll see the smoke start to build up and as you slowly shut it, that point you want is right as the smoke is almost nothing going out the front of the smoker, out the front of the pig body. What you've done there is find the balance between how much air is needed to go in and keep the fire sustained without actually burning too hot with heaps of air in there and we're losing, I can feel that heat coming back at me now. And when we push that shut, we'll be using all that heat straight up through the smoker there so that we get a nice consistent cook. All right, folks, another 30 minutes into the cook. So we'll just crack this open and see how we're going. There you go. Beautiful piece of meat sitting there right now. Um, our drippings tray is starting to uh, evaporate though, so we'll grab another beer bottle full of water and top that up. Just gently pour that in so we don't splash it everywhere. I'm probably actually going to get another one in there, so we'll do another one. back up again. Temperature's been pretty consistent in the cook, so still around the 150 in there with the door shut, so we'll get that shut and keep this cook going, eh? All right, folks, so we're nearly at the uh, end of the cooking process for the meat itself, so just thought I'd show you guys in the meantime, what I do as far as prep for the veg. So I've just chopped up some taters there. What I'm gonna do is grab myself some oil. So I've just got uh, some rice bran oil there that I like to use for my cooking. Clearly my bottle's just about empty, but there'll be enough there to just throw on. Beauty. Just give them a good toss in that oil. Then 
then it becomes a really easy process of wrapping them up in some oil. So we're actually just going to use the uh, smoker oven, seems we've already got it on the Auspig, and throw those veggies straight into that. And you can do whatever veggies you like. We often do sweet potato, potato, pumpkin, and the likes, just to adjust your cooking temps based on what veggie you've got. Obviously, white potato is going to take the longest to cook, so you want to give it the most time. But if you're doing, say, um, <clears throat> doing, say, sweet potato, you're going to roughly halve the time for an equal size piece of white potato to um, sweet potato or pumpkin. So pretty easy little process there. Just make sure you get your times right. Uh, and away you go. Today I'm just going to throw some potatoes and onion in just to keep this video short and simple so you guys aren't trying to comprehend a huge amount of content in one go and how I cook stuff. So, um, so we'll start wrapping those up. A nice and simple process. Just keep the wrap as tight as you can, like so. And just rinse and repeat one piece after another until you've done all your pieces. All right, so there we have the potatoes all wrapped up and ready to go, next to do the onions. So just uh, top and tail these to peel them. Nice, quick, easy process. So even if you're fast enough, you don't get the tears. Nearly done already. Boom, that easy. Once they're peeled, slice them in half. And then again, no oil this time, and just wrap those up. Now, make sure you keep those separate to your taters because the cooking times are going to be different and we don't want to put them all in the smoker together. Alright, so there we have it. Tonight's veggies prepped, ready to go. Alright folks, so... This will probably be the last check we do on the meat before we take it out, wrap it, and uh, rest it. So, looking absolutely superb in there. So, look at this. Still so much moisture in that meat. That's unbelievable. That's so good. And hence the reason we use the, uh, the, the, the injector to push a lot of that moisture in. So, as it cooks, it's, yeah, quite good. We're getting plenty of, getting a bit of bark on there, but because of that moisture around the uh, piece of meat, it's gonna stay pretty moist even on the outside for now. So looking absolutely superb. I won't worry about topping up the uh, drippings tray just yet. I reckon we'll get the next half hour out of that before I have to stress too much. So let's keep cooking. All right, folks, so we're just about ready to take the meat out. Still sitting at that 150 C mark. The internal temp of the meat should be somewhere around the 60 plus degrees C. Um, when we take it out, we're gonna wrap that in foil and get it into an esky so that we get um, that cooking process to continue. Staying nice and moist and we can throw the veggies in the smoker. Alrighty, folks, so to get that meat out, Throw down a couple of bits of foil on the bench. Stay. And then we're going to get the meat. Oh, geez, that smells good.
All right, so we'll bring it over. Lay it out onto the uh, foil there. And then wrap him up. Yeah, that's right. It ain't ready to eat yet. It looks good enough to eat, I know. But this is the part that gets you the most tender piece of meat you've ever seen, tasted, or otherwise experienced in your mouth. So, put it all nicely wrapped up. Now what do we do? Next step, walk over here, and we grab the best bath towel you can find. Well, clearly this one's been used out here a few times. So, wrap this piece of meat carefully up in the best bath towel you could find at the time. Clearly this one's got a few oils in it. It's been used once or twice. Roll it up as best you can. Grab yourself one of these little fellas, otherwise known as an esky. Plonk said piece of meat in esky. Shut the lid. Set it aside, we'll come back to that in an hour. So, next trick, we need to get some veggies into the smoker. So, I'll grab the spuds, we'll put them down nice and low, uh, straight on the tray that we had the, the rack that we had the, uh, the meat on there. All right, so we're gonna throw those potatoes on. So if you drop your smoker temp to about 120, you'll see these cook just nicely in about an hour. All right, last couple of trays. Throw the rest of the spuds on. I'll go in straight on top of the last lot. We'll rack up the onions, but don't put them in yet. They don't take anywhere near here as long as a potato to cook, so we don't want them in your smoker as yet, or your oven. Um, what we will do before we shut it up and uh, get those spuds cooking, is just quickly grab out the drippings tray. So we've got all the moisture there that's been simmering for a while. We just want to set that aside to let it to start to cool a little bit. So very carefully, because this is super hot, without spilling it on yourself or anyone else, is just set that aside to start to cool down. All right, <clears throat> let's keep cooking. All right, folks, so um, time to check the spuds and get these onions in there. So uh, just gonna use the carving fork. <clears throat> So those potatoes are nearly done. So I'll throw in our last shelf with the uh, onion slice there ready to go. Pop them in. Close her up. And with a bit more magic of time, then we're gonna be ready to go. All right, folks, so that's an hour in with the veggies in. So we'll grab our trusty roast fork. It's nice and soft all the way through that spud. So we are done. We'll grab them off. If you don't put the shelf too close to the top and then can't get them out, that is. for that one. It's gone. Bucket's wrapped in foil, eh? Grab the onions.
And there we have our veggies. So last bit on the roast list tonight, it's gonna to be our gravy. We'll be back soon to cook that. All right, folks, time to make some delicious gravy. Uh, so got a bit of water. Bang a bit of corn flour in here. Go mixy, mixy, mixy. Until it's all dissolved. No lumps. Not allowed lumps. Alright, we're looking schmick. That's ready to go. Cool. Put the lid on this before I end up with it all over me. <clears throat> Alright. Next bit. We want... A couple of oxos crushed up. Stock cubes, FYI. Into a hot pan. Boom. One. There were two of them in there. Then we're gonna strain some of our drippings into the pan. Sort of strain. Beautiful. That's the start of our gravy. You don't wanna use all of it. It can get a bit rich, especially being in the smoker, so it gets quite a smoky flavor to it, and you really don't want heaps and heaps of it in there. Bring that to the simmer, and then once that's to the simmer, we'll add that corn flour mix to it. All right, folks, so we've got the um, the drippings there on the simmer with some um, um, stock cubes in there. Just pour a little bit of our corn flour and water concoction in. Don't want to put too much in at once, otherwise you just end up with a big, thick, gluggy mess and don't know what to call it, because it certainly won't be gravy. Slowly add a bit more in until we get that consistency we're after. <clears throat> if you like watery gravy, don't add much. If you like it nice and thick, like me, I'm nice and thick, then put plenty in. Pop that in, we'll bring it back to the simmer and just keep stirring that. And that's going to be a bloody good gravy. It's going to thicken up nicely once we get that to the simmer, so we'll get that going and there yeah, we'll have our gravy. Alright, so now we've got the gravy done, time to unwrap the roast. It's a shame you can't smell through the camera because this smells real good, eh? So good, the dog just showed up. See what it looks like cut. Look at that. 
delicious. You can see those nice big pieces of garlic there. They just kind of slice away in, in the meat. That looks beautiful and tender. Smells bloody delicious. That's real good. Well, chef's privilege. Got to try a bit here. Hmm. Don't know what everyone else is eating for dinner, but I got mine. All right, folks. So there you have it. One delicious dinner. Roast beef, beer and garlic injected, uh, along with some roast veg in the Ospig smoker oven. Delish. Enjoy.